we're going to talk a little bit about our launch pad. This is my launch pad here. I just made it myself. Actually, I used the bottom of an office chair, took a small piece of tin, bent it a little bit, attached it to the legs with some rivets, and there we go. Put a hole in the top here. Okay, and this is my launching rod. All it is a nice, long, straight piece of welding rod. Welding rod with no coating on it, gas welding rod. All right, and I just have this styrofoam at the top. I put this styrofoam on the top, that way when we're outside or working around the launch pad, nobody bends down and stabs himself in the eye with this, because that's going to be nasty, you get that in the end of your eye. So you know what, and look, this is a piece of my rocket nose cone foam, there, keeps everybody safe. So we're just going to install that in there, there we go, just like that, there we are, we're good to go with this launch pad. The next thing about launching our rockets, is you need to have a proper igniter. In order to properly and safely launch our rocket, we need a proper launching mechanism of some sort. These rocket motors use electricity to, to actually ignite the propellant. So we need to have, first of all, a battery or a power source. 9-volt batteries are good, but personally I prefer to use a 12-volt car battery. It just gives you that power that you need. So, what I use myself, is just, just this is just something I made up. Okay, a little project box at Radio Shack. This... This is just a push button on off, that's our launch, and this is just an illuminated rocker switch. When it's turned on, it will light up, and then you push the button to launch. Oh, but we forgot something. Into mine, I have this small little jumper wire. And this is called my safety key. It goes here inside this connector, and that will keep anybody from launching when we're not prepared. Without this, you can push this button all day long, and it won't launch. This has to be installed. This is the very last thing that you get, and then you push the button. Of these wires here, I've coiled them up to make it a little bit easier here. These wires here, the long, long lead. There's a lot of wire there, okay? These long leads, you have two clips at the end. You will take those two clips and install them on those two little wires right there on the end of the rocket motor itself, okay? It doesn't matter which end you put on which end. That doesn't matter. The other end of this launch mechanism clips onto the battery. Again, I like to use a car battery, usually on my lawn tractor or whatever. It gives you, again, that much more power. A 9 volt battery, if you launch a bunch of rockets in one day, that 9 volt battery won't last. If you use a 9 volt battery, make sure you have a good couple batteries. Make sure they're new. Easiest way, that way you don't have any misfires. After a few launches, what happens is they start to get burned on the ends. If the ends get too burnt, you just take a piece of sandpaper or maybe a stiff wire brush or something and clean those ends up. You have to have a good electrical connection. If you don't, again, you're going to have one of those embarrassing misfires. You usually have a whole bunch of friends watching and then you're like, eh, not flying. Okay? Make sure those are clean. Make sure this is clean. The reason you have to have this plate on the bottom, I should mention, is when you launch the rocket, you can just tell the thrust fire coming out of this thing. If you don't have a plate on yours, you're going to catch somebody's field on fire and there's going to be nothing out but trouble. So do yourself a favor when you make one or if you buy one, make sure it has a good size deflector shield on it. 